Hello, it's Brad Laurie, your blockchain brand. Today we're talking about all things Tomo Chain, and to do that, we have the CEO once again with me. His name is Long Vuong, and it's been a long time coming six, six months, in fact, since I spoke with Long. Long, thank you very much for being here to explain about all the updates that you're doing. Thank you, Brad, for having me here today again. So, Tomo Chain was launched in December 2018. And we have been working nonstop for the last six or seven months to build new feature for our end user. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we're going to launch some very important feature in the next uh, three to four months. And uh, we hope that, you know, to make Tomo Chain is, is, uh, is one of the better public blockchain out there. Absolutely. And that's exactly why we're here. For those who would like to know, this is an entirely free interview that Long and I have set up. Um, and I, I have known him for some time and we try to provide information and education for all of the users in this industry we call cryptocurrency and blockchain. Now, to continue on, though, I want to bring it back a little bit to what you stand for, what you fundamentally are, Long. So those people who haven't been introduced to Tomo Chain can learn. You say you're the most efficient blockchain for the token economy and you also you know address the needs for highly scalable blockchains fast and secure give us a bit of a, a rundown though on fundamentally what you are because you alluded to mm -hmm. the fact that you are a blockchain you're not just an add-on you're not just that layer two yes we are an independent public blockchain and we really aims to be one of the most decentralized scalable but also privacy preserving a public blockchain out there. And um, at lunch, Tomo Chain is doing one to 2,000 uh, transactions per second. That is what we call scalable and efficient uh, public chains. Mm -hmm. And uh, we still having very large number of block producers, uh, which stay at 150 for Tomo Chains, uh, which keeps the, the chain decentralized and being governed by a very large number of community nodes also as well as like from as a project as well right and that's why people uh, throughout the crypto industry and, and space really like the, your model because it is highly decentralized you do have the 150 master nodes which we'll mm -hmm. look into to really bolster the security uh, of your network and also really evidence that you are genuinely decentralized by design. But I want to go and uh, back to throughput and latency, for example, uh, for, for a moment, because since we spoke, that needs to improve to really showcase that you are, in, in fact, building that technology. How is that going in terms of the speed now comparatively to when we spoke and that latency? Uh, we are still keeping the spef specification at launch, which is uh, 2,000 transactions per second. and uh, the reality is uh, the chain is having a lot of spare capacity. Uh, right now, we, we are having about 100,000 uh, accounts uh, on chains. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's around 500 to 1,000 uh, daily active users. And generally, you know, they use less than 0.1% of the chain capacity. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't see any uh, rush to, to to push the scalability further. And uh, we focus on delivering some really kept like utility and use case on chain for the end user instead. Right. So basically what you're saying is that all of the throughput latency success you've had in the past doesn't necessarily need to be updated yet because it's servicing the need and far and beyond. Uh, you have the capacity to move well mm. and truly to the future and still have more than enough um, requirements and scalability capacity. Um, so in that respect, let's talk about the main net. Now it's live. What does that mean for Tomo? It means Tomo Chain is now a public property belonging to the community. Of course, the Tomo Chain team is still playing very important role in uh, developing new feature and uh, keeping uh, you know, the chain secure by, by and also developing different application and uh, ecosystem around Tomo Chain. But right. we're actually having uh, a few other important entity uh, coming to work, uh, coming to Tomo Chain and work with us. For example, to Tomo Global is a, a new entity announced uh, like one or two weeks ago. Uh, 
founded by a group of investors. Mm-hmm. And we have as a company like uh, Chaintech building TomoSwap on TomoChain mm-hmm. and uh, a few other ecosystem project like ChipMise, uh, Ypass building project on top of TomoChain as well. Right, so you've got a lot of projects now building upon your platform, essentially doing their own startups. Um, and obviously the, the option there is to tokenize. But can we pull it back to Tomo Global for a moment? You mentioned that. What is it and what's it about? It is uh, an, uh, a, a community initiative mm-hmm. uh, because uh, Tomo Chain team, the core team is uh, really focusing on the technology side and um, uh, we're building the foundation, uh, somewhat similar to Ethereum Foundation, doing to Ethereum. Uh, we need help in terms of user need development and outreach to the have like different reason. And uh, that's what, you know, Tolo, Tomo Global is coming in and help mm-hmm. in, uh, in a way. Right. Well, it's good to see that you are building and we'll look into some of the partnerships uh, in the, later in the interview. We'll also talk about more of the applications that are onboarding, which I think is important. But what about the, the consensus? I wanted to ask you about that. That's so important to your overall security and the way in which your master nodes are structured. Has that changed from that proof of, of, of state uh, when it comes to voting? So TomoChain is using our, our unique consensus called a proof of state voting. Mm-hmm. So the key idea here is that uh, we have a maximum of 150 master nodes, but it's not, the are not fit and they are not chosen by TomoChain company or any other entity, mm-hmm. but they are voted uh, permissionally by the, the coin holder. And uh, every epoch, we have the token holder vote for all the master node candidate to get to get to the top 150 uh, biggest vote, biggest have like master node holder who become the validator for the chain in the next epoch. And that right. is happening every 30 minutes. So the chain is uh, very have like agile and have like uh, flexible in terms of like uh, securing. Uh, making sure the chain is um, is 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 secure. Yes, and I remember and, we were talking about this last time long. But uh, mm-hmm. I wanted to find out how whether he, whether you have observed that it's still democratic because of the flux, that constant change in the the way in which the the, the validation process occurs, the way in which the voting occurs. It's con- it's constantly changing. Is that the reason why this is democratic? Is that the reason why it gives people a chance to participate? Mm-hmm. So we, we, have, uh, we have on the voting and um, proposing for, for master node candidate happening is one of our government DApp called Tomo Master. Mm-hmm. We quickly become the number one uh, DApp on, uh, on the app store like DApp.com or the app review. Right. So we have normally like 200 people voting and unvoting all the time, mm-hmm. every day. And that's, that's, uh, that's the fun thing. So, and it's also showing that the chain is attracting uh, a lot of uh, token holders mm-hmm. who want to vote because of the economic benefits, but also because they want to you know, understand how the government works and uh, want to secure the chain as well. Right. So it's all working successfully since it's been in operation with the proof of, uh, proof of state voting consensus. Are you having no problems with that? Everything's up to date? So far, the chain has been running remarkably stable, except for the first two months, we have some, uh, we have some issue with kind of like the, the storage below. So just then uh, we, we, uh, we, we, the team is quickly seeing the issue and, uh, and develop a fix uh, to, to the chain. And now the chain is uh, quite stable. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's running on uh, very much close to the specification. Right. And what about the GitHub? Are you updating it with the repo with any updates that you're making? Obviously, it's all open source now and it always was from the outset. Yeah, yeah. Feel free to come to check out our GitHub at, uh, you know, GitHub Tomo Chain. Right? So it. we have like a dozen of repo going on at the moment. Sure. Okay. Now, what about security? Some of the things that you talk about to make sure that you have security built in are things like double validation. Um, you also have your staking via the smart contracts and you also do that true randomization process. 
Can you give us a little bit more uh, assurance that you have made sure from the features you brought in that security is an important part of your system and you can prove it? So, after the mainnet, we have been uh, working with HackerOne, mm -hmm. one of the biggest security uh, company in the space who actually did the program for EOS, Sean, and some other public blockchain. And uh, we have been running uh, the HackerOne bounty program for, I think, the last five months. And I think the rate of error and issue happening with TomoChain is much lower than comparable public chain. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I'm not going to say which ones. So if you are interested in it, right, you can go to HackerOne and you can see that the bounty for finding the bug are still available. And HackerOne is, is a wicked name in the space in terms of like uh, securing, uh, the, securing the chain and finding the bug and mm -hmm. vulnerability of the chain. So right. I think that, that's, that, that's one thing, right? That's one thing we, we did to make sure that end user can be, uh, can be confident that it's secure. Confident, you know, mm. yeah, confident when using our chain and make sure that there's no issue, even though that there's no issue, even though that we also have the internal team doing have like security audit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're doing the, the typical stuff of the audits, but you're also building new things in, which is good to hear. Um, and obviously those other aspects, they're part of that more, uh, more team-led uh, service or focus to build, develop, maintain the security through that yeah. double validation. And as I said, there's other aspects. Now, what about your products? That's something you have built out a lot more of since we spoke. You have a rich suite of products now. Things like, well, your flagship products, which you call the Tomo Z, and you've also got some others. You have the Tomo Wallet, Tomo Master, as you mentioned, Tomo Scan. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to just give us a bit of a rundown on just, you know, the suite of options you have as products and how you've evolved since we last spoke? So, uh, our user really loves our mobile wallet, which is the Tomo Wallet. Uh, we the Tomo letter have been uh, have been going to I think uh, at least six or seven iteration, and it's getting better and better. You can control multiple wallet, mm -hmm. uh, control multiple token, uh, different token standard within the wallet, and I think uh, a lot of our users are using the Tomo wallet every day. Uh, we also have the the governance DApp Tomo Master, and uh, Tomo Scan is our own blockchain explorer. I think so. We we have done pretty, you know, uh, good job in terms of producing the product. But I'm very uh, excited about what we are going to bring out in the next uh, two or three months. That is okay. Tomo Z protocol and a TRC twenty one standard. Okay, tell so us a bit about why the, the, why is the, Tomo, the Tomo Z protocol so exciting for you. The Tomo Z protocol called is uh, free by any token. Mm -hmm. So basically the idea here is that any project can issue token on Tomo chain. And then they can airdrop that token to, to their own like 100,000 uh, user. Mm -hmm. And the user can, you know, stand up, pick up the wallet and send the token right away without paying for buy to buy Tomo. So the Tomo is not need to pay for the transaction fee or gas anymore. Okay, so you make it really easy for the uptake of new startups because you don't have to pay those fees initially. I, I think it's not just about startup because we are talking with a few big companies right now and mm -hmm. one of them is a loyalty point company. They are doing, uh, they are going to issue tokens on top of Tomo Chain for their 100,000 users. And that's not a small number given, you know, uh, blockchain space is still like have not very big amount of users, yes? Mm, that's right. Let's talk about that a bit more though in that context because when we first met, there really wasn't a lot of projects like you um, and there wasn't a lot of evidence empirically of um, mainstream companies using the blockchain. Has that changed a lot in your, from your experience as a CEO long now mm. that you are in Vietnam, which is one of the world, the global hubs for blockchain, quite sincerely it really is. Are you seeing more evidence of companies paying attention to something like Tomo Chain and, and coming on board 
and proving that this can actually work. I think if the adoption didn't change mass in the last, in the last six months, it actually like went down because of the bear markets, right? Of course, we, 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 the, we went up in the last four months, mm -hmm. but kept like the number of users who use the app is actually stable or even uh, went down a little bit. So right. that's the reason I think the initiative like Tumbuzi's fee by any token protocol is very important. Mm -hmm. We need to, uh, to entice projects and users who even doesn't, who doesn't even know much about blockchain and cryptocurrency to get used to uh, cryptocurrency a little bit by little bit to start selling the first transaction. And then they can, you know, they can move up and they can do more things with blockchain and, and crypto. Right. So essentially, it's a bridge to really make sure that this can happen more successfully with Tomo Z. So are there any companies, you, you alluded to some, and you can't obviously say the names of everything, but give us some examples of the kinds of companies now that can use Tomo Z uh, or are going to use Tomo Z to come on when they otherwise may not have before this was introduced uh, so that you can attract more um, top tier yeah. companies, hopefully, into the ecosystem you've built. Yes, CS, uh, kind of like medium company right now. And, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm still very exciting because uh, we, we have to start from somewhere and, you know, having a, a portfolio of small or medium company adopting Tobuzi mm -hmm. is, 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 uh, is in this uh, start, right? And then we take it into the next level to have a really big company adopting Tumuzi protocol. Right. Okay. Well, it'll be good to see more of this as it comes to fruition. Now, with regard to the applications that already exist, I really want to go into detail about that. Um, what are the numbers currently of the dApps that you do have running or the, the startups that are onboarding? Uh, so we get an idea of the kind of growth that you've had since we spoke. Uh, in terms of dApp, we have 14 dApp listed in, uh, in the dApp.com. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and the okay. and the top three, yeah, the top three D app is uh, as Tomo Master, the governor D app, mm -hmm. Tomo Swap, which is uh, a decentralized swap protocol, uh, which which is uh, similar to uh, Kyber Swap on Ethereum, but it's mm -hmm. on Tomo Chain. And uh, the last one is is a game called uh, Macbeth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're the top three. Oh, actually, we, we have some new, uh, really new DF, like ChipMice. ChipMice is a loyalty point issue for, for Chip Protocol, to, for ChipMe, the travel uh, marketplace, mm -hmm. and uh, they use it uh, as a loyalty point for the user. And you I can see. actually use, uh, use, use a point to pay for travel and hotel in the chip me platform right well that's going to be good for all the people who like traveling there's actually another company i know of called Chavala, who does something similar it's and very so, similar to Chavala, Chavala, yes right and it's good to hear that people can again utilize uh, tokenized systems and economies uh, built specifically for things people love to do which is travel so that's a good thing i think that a, a good example of use case now one thing you have done is you've extended the number slightly but do you feel like you're on track because 14 isn't a great number, let's be real about that. Is, it, is this because of the bear market, like you said? Is, is the bear market, did the bear market stifle the kind of uh, you know, growth potential of Tomo? Or do you feel like you're on track and that you know, there's potential to really move forward uh, as we get more uh, people um, onboarding, more evidence of use cases, uh, more verticals opening up? We don't necessarily going to, you know, for the, for the quantity alone, right? Mm. Because uh, if you have one or two really good DM, then it can attract a lot of users. And that, that is happening with a lot of as a mainstream application. Right. Uh, you just need one hit, right? And uh, it can get to like billion of billion users. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that, that's, that's the philosophy we have at Tomo Chain. We really prioritize. Uh, quality over quantities mm -hmm. and um, that, that's uh, you know that's uh, the direction we want to to develop the ecosystem for kind of like working with really good project and um, uh, bring it on Tomo Chain. What a good answer so quality over quantity you want to make sure that the whole system is really about representing 
purposeful and meaningful collaborations as you build these and support these um, businesses that are coming forward. Now, with regard to that, I noticed that one of the key verticals now is gaming, um, and that's represented also in your own ecosystem. Why is gaming so popular right now? Is it a genuine use case, uh, or, or are a lot of these games just really simple and gambling-based, or uh, is it Tomo taking it to the next level and having real games come on board? I think the gambling is still like the biggest category of gaming uh, within the crypto gaming industry. Mm. Uh, the reason is it's easy to build. And uh, actually, like, you know, uh, it gives benefit for users. If you are really into that kind of game, it's easy to play. Mm -hmm. So um, we also are working closely with some projects like XC Infinity, right? Uh, they are building uh, firstly on uh, Ethereum and and uh, they want to work on Tomo Chain as well. And uh, mm -hmm. we have really good relationship. And uh, we did a crowd sale, a land sale for XC Infinity, so that the Tomo holder can buy uh, stuff on XC Infinity using Tomo. And um, uh, I, 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 I am looking for work for XC Infinity to, to, to port some of the game to Tomo Chain as well. Mm -hmm. I, think, uh, I think overall, the gaming industry seem to be like the the biggest potential for for the app uh, the app in uh, on, on blockchain right. but so far i think at least uh, this year it has been quite slow we haven't seen any big have like uh, big burst burst out mm, uh, we haven't yet no. for, for, for this year so um well, I think so. We, we just need to, we, we still need to work hard, right? And, uh, you know, the direction is, is, uh, seems to be right. And we, we just need to work hard and find the, the right moment, the right click with the capitalize the mainstream, the mass of mainstream user. Right. And what about some of the other partnerships? So obviously, we don't have time to go through them all in detail, but I'll just name a few. And if there's some that really stand out, we can talk about them further. But you've done a lot of partnerships in the last few months long with regard to companies like, for example, Shift. Um, you mentioned Infinity uh, Terra, you know, with the stablecoin. Mm -hmm. You've done things like with Bitor, Toecoin. Uh, Noya, a very interesting one right now. Uh, Contentos, Constant, Lithium, Shift, Morpheus Labs. A lot of partnerships you've done, and you're not the sort of person to do partnerships that are just superficial. So, have, can you attest to these partnerships? Firstly, being genuine, real, and for real purpose. And what are some of the ones that stand out for you as you build forward? Obviously, Terra is big, right? They just launch uh, their mainnet in uh, in Korea and they, you did, know, yeah. they 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 launch the Chai payment processor which you know which becomes the top one of the top mobile app download in Korea right away. So right. Uh, I, I, I I'm very happy that's so we, we 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 did the partnership with Terra and uh, we still keep the contact right and uh, once they decided to when they decide to get out out of China, out of Korea, and uh, move to other reason. Uh, we we can talk about mm. collaboration in Southeast Asia, for example. Are you doing that yet? Because I've spoken to Terra, and as you know, they had the dual token model, much like the Libra proposal that is on hold right now. Mm. And Terra, as you said, they're out. They're they're doing their e-commerce right now, and they're starting to move into these regions like Vietnam, Indonesia, mm. many countries actually through Asia. So, are they starting to give you a call and say we're ready? Because they must be close. Yeah, we, we have a shared Telegram group, and uh, we, we uh, when they launch, uh, we, we talk, right? So we definitely still keep the discussion going. Right, and because they're a stablecoin system with their tokens, what's the plan? Can you give us a bit of an un, like a, a run, a, a, a explanation mm -hmm. of how Tomo could collaborate with the stablecoin system that they've built? So I think so. Specifically for Terra, right? So we did the discussion back in, I think, so February or March, and um, they they are blockchain agnostic at that point, mm -hmm. and uh, Tomo Chain is one of the options they are choosing, especially when they are entering Southeast Asia or Vietnam, uh, specifically, mm -hmm. uh, because they going to cap like adopt their token to the local currency. So yes, they have to be like a, a local player to, to, to help them to do that. Yes. So uh, we will explore the area of 
have like a collaboration with them uh, later on. Right, and it's interesting because they're using what they call a basket of currencies where they yeah. don't peg to just one and they're using, as you said, the local ones. So even more reason why it's quite interesting that you've partnered in this sense with Terra because they're also so focused on this region of mm -hmm. the world that you're situated in. Um, what about some of the other partnerships we mentioned? Were there any that really stood mm -hmm. out to you as very important right now that are doing some key things? I think Noya is, uh, is also a very interesting project, right? And uh, they are doing the IEO in, in Korea in the next few days, I think. Yes, and they then they're going to list in Kukoi. That's, that's what I, I read. Mm. And um, we, we, uh, we, did, uh, you know, we did talk a long time ago, like a few months back. And uh, we did agree to, to explore each other further for, for outside, right? We want to see what, are, what, is, what is the concept of programmable internet is going to be, right? Mm -hmm. How they going to be like a better and, you know, more faster, have like access to internet for, for company. And right. uh, for, for, for Tumbo Chain, right, uh, we, we have the ledger, we have the distributed scalable ledger technology that can help them, you know, to build the decentralized exchange for their, I think so, what they call is, uh, you know, the internet transit token, mm -hmm. right? And, um, um, the team, the technical team is still kind of like talking and working with each other right now. Right. Okay. And it's interesting because they are currently about to really move forward into their, with their own uh, listings. That's all going to come mm -hmm. forward. They've done their raises. So it's interesting to see all these startups start to emerge and work with you and have their own use cases and collaborations. What about um, anything else? I thought it was interesting how you have Tomo Ishua connected to one of the companies named Bitorg. Um, were any of those, for example, standouts in collaborations you've built? Mm. Bitorg is uh, issuing TRC21 mm -hmm. on top of Tomozi protocol that I just described to you. So basically, they're going to, uh, to adopt our new token standard. That is the first, first kind of new, you know, first kind of token on this particularly new standard on top of Tumbo Chain. And I, I'm very excited uh, to see how it's uh, actually running. Yes. And uh, besides that, I think the bit of is, uh, is a, a derivative exchange platform, right? Mm -hmm. So on its own right, I think it's, it's, a, it's a, an interesting application uh, for, for crypto industry. Absolutely. And what's interesting too, you mentioned standards. Now, uh, there's a standard that changed or there's a bit of a transition right now with regard to Binance. That is a very recent announcement that you made. Um, 8th of July is a big date for you because that allows for Tomo B um, to become relevant and they're, they're mm -hmm. for the native token switch to be possible for anyone who has, holds Tomo. Can you talk us through what it means to have the Binance DEX support? to have this new emerging um, token called Tomo B, which is essentially that BP2 um, mm. token. Um, is it a big deal for you? I, I, I'm also very uh, excited about, you know, what is happening with Binance S and uh, of course uh, Binance Chain in general. So we, dice, we decided earlier that we go going to swap a part of the Tomo to Tombow Chain, uh, from Tombow Chain to Binance Chain, mm -hmm. and I call this uh, Tombow B. I think the reason here is that uh, I, I actually believe that cross chain interoperability is, is a really big part of open finance, mm. a big part of the new future we are building. And uh, if you think about it uh, in the future, we hope that we can bring BTC or Ether to Tombow Chain, right? So, that means, you know, um, if, Tomo, if Tomo can be in the more public chain, it's better for the branding and for Tomo, right? right. So I think the Tomo B is, 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 is certainly a part of the, kind of like, uh, kind of like the bigger Tomo chain ecosystem, but it's living on Binance chain. I see. So, so really that, it's that's, changing this. There is something, now, uh, you know, we, 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 we definitely capitalize a pioneer in uh, doing that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are really supporting Binance Chain and, uh, and the vision of open finance.
Yeah. Okay. Well, so you're supporting open finance, you're supporting interoperability, and you want mm-hmm. to open up the potential of Tomo into other ecosystems, into other, um, literally into other exchanges. I mean, it's going to move into the decentralized system that Binance has built called the Binance DEX. Now, to do that, uh, they have their own standards, and you're allowing for a, a Tomo B to exist, but you have a Tomo bridge system to mm-hmm. make sure that it's going to be quite seamless. Are there any concerns in the community about when they can access this or when they can start to partake in the DEX? And do they have to do it? Do they have to make the transition? If they don't want to, for example, could they just stay with Tomo? Definitely. If, if you know, token holder don't want to move uh, to Binance Chain, uh, don't want to move the Tomo to Binance Chain, they can stay on Tomo Chain. And on Tomo Chain, there are uh, you know, a few things you can do on Tomo Chain with Tomo that you cannot do with Tomo B on Binance Chain, right? Mm-hmm. So you can stake on Tomo Chain, you can play some app on Tomo Chain, but on Tomo, with Tomo B, you can trade on Binance Chain and Binance Dex, right? So right. I think so it's really uh, give have like the token holder the, the liberty to choose uh, which option they want to do with their token. Right, so you have the option for different types of utility. And how does that affect the actual metrics, you know, the token tokenomics as well? Because if some are switching over into the uh, Binance ecosystem, surely mm-hmm. the utility shift is going to affect everything, but also just the way in which um, the ecosystem is upheld inside Tomo. So how do you deal with that with your to- tokenomic design? I still think uh, Tomo on Tomo chain have a lot of utility, right? And uh, further from utility, you have to secure the chain. And from that, you get the, the, the token reward from the network. Mm-hmm. So unless you want to check Tomo B on Binance, you can stay on Tomo chain. And I think, I think, it's, uh, I think the community really support this move. And some of them, you know, even though they don't, don't necessarily, not necessarily chat on Binance Chain, they still move, move Tomo to Tomo B. Right. Okay. Um, so have you capped it to, to secure the network to make sure that we can trust that there's not going to be a mass migration across or a mass exodus? How do we know that there's still going to be enough um, validators, enough supporters of Tomo for the ecosystem to, be, to thrive? It is right now. We still having uh, 150 master node, right? And actually, the, the amount of token locked for Tomo Chain is, is quite big. It's mm-hmm. more than 50% right now. Okay. So uh, the calculation of Tomo is around 61 million, and we have 33 million locked in the smart contract to secure to, uh, Tomo Chain. And I think that's a really kind of like a good number. And um, I think uh, we, we, we will have to see, right? So unless, you know, Tomo B on Binance Chain is, uh, is, uh, is, is uh, much more expensive, right? And give mm-hmm. a lot more, you know, profit to, to, to the seller. Otherwise, I, I don't think, you know, uh, more, than, uh, more than what already moved. I mean, like people will stay on Tomo Chain. Right, got it. I see what you're saying. So if it's uh, an expensive move for some, they won't do it. But in the, in the context of trading, because you mentioned that that may be one of the reasons why they make this switch into the Binance DEX ecosystem, do you support trading? Do you think that that's a useful use case or it's a real use case, given that you're also trying to build out you know, the real purpose, which is for these tokens to be utilities, um, for them to actually have a purpose beyond the trade mm-hmm. itself? I think marketplace is useful, right? So we we having a lot of different type of markets in in our our life, right? To buy different things, mm-hmm. and uh, marketplace have role just uh, it uh, provide liquidity and you know it provide have like pricing mechanism for everything, mm-hmm. right? Things that are on marketplace with enough liquidity have price, and uh, we can use that type of signal to make decision on a lot of things. Okay. And, uh, uh, we 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 need. Trader, right? So trader is, uh, you know, kind of like basically trader as a rational economic agent to make the decision to sell or buy. Mm-hmm. And uh, that give a fair price for Tomo or other thing. And I think they, they, they have a role. They have a role to play. 
Sure. Now, Binance is famous for offering the best volumes, um, the best traction, the best attention. So is this going to all feed in to support Tomo better? Uh, quite realistically, did the team at Tomo, Tomo Chain assess this well before they made this decision to mm -hmm. partner in this way? And do you think it will really help your own token, your own native uh, utility token? in terms of value because of the, all of the suite of resources that Binance bring? I, I think I, I want Tomo to be everywhere. That's, that's, that's what I want, right? I, I talk with our team and you know, we, we have the discussion, we want Tomo on every exchange and mm -hmm. everywhere. That's so people can accept it, buy it, and, uh, un, and learn about it. And, uh, when they learn about it, you know, and uh, understand it, they can choose what to do, right? So you two more to play a game or better, you know, just keep to more uh, store value or, you know, move to more to to stake to stake it and, mm -hmm. you know, and keep it for a long term. So uh, I think I think the goal is uh, to make to more available to a lot of people uh, in a lot of places. Right. And was it expensive or was there a cost involved in this process to have to, you know, to enable this um, collaboration, this interoperable mm -hmm. sort of um, reciprocal established system? I, I think so. we, we, we are really careful uh, when uh, spending money because we, firstly, we didn't raise a lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Secondly, I, I, I prioritize, you know, spending money for development and, you know, building product and make them useful. But uh, with a good, you know, business development, you know, uh, relationship, uh, we, you know, we can offer value. For example, we can offer, you know, access to Vietnamese trader and mm -hmm. access to Tomo token holder. And that's to give us uh, like some advantage to on getting on some of the exchanges. And um, I think uh, we, we have a really good relationship with Binance and, uh, you know, uh, there is no, uh, there is, it's not, uh, the court is not a big issue. Right. Okay. Now, what about your runway along since we spoke last, you mentioned you didn't raise a lot, which was true, but do you have enough capital to see this through now that you've, you know, made those negotiations with Binance, you have a good relationship, you have assets that they like. You mentioned that with your um, developer ecosystem, even in Vietnam. So they've obviously made it viable and possible for you. But do you have enough money to build out the Tomo ecosystem and to support the more adapts, to support uh, all the employees that you have? Uh, definitely, right. So uh, our, our team, right, Tomo Chain Company exists before the ICO. And um, we, 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 we have revenue from development work and integration consulting work in Japan, in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So we, we are in a fairly good shape right now. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we, we, con we will continue to work to support Tomo Chain and its ecosystem long in, in the future. Right, okay, well that's good to know for those people who continue to support this with the, you know, the prospect of con continued utility value in the future. Um, so what about the Vietnam government? I noticed that you have been talking to them, you have a very strong relationship with them. Is that strengthening further? And what evidence um, can you tell us, you know, that can showcase that you continue to strengthen this relationship? Mm -hmm. So recently we, uh, we launched an uh, initiative in Vietnam called uh, Open Certificate. And um, we already have the, the technical work done and we have the demo. So basically we invite all of the educational institution and a training program to issue certificate mm -hmm. and diploma on Tomo Chain. And it will be like uh, immutable uh, and a non, non fakeable right? Mm -hmm. And um, well, we, we started to do it with uh, our, our developer training program. And we will talk with the Ministry of Education and uh, as a big educational uh, institution in Vietnam. I think it's really kept like a non-profit initiative because mm -hmm. uh, we're offering the platform for free for everyone uh, in Bonn, right? And um, I think that's, that's something, you know, uh, we hope that uh, can bring the good win from, you know, from the government and, you know, uh, to Tumbo Chain because uh, mm -hmm. we, that's, that's, that's what we, we were working for, bringing some real benefit 
to the well, society. And given that this is the Ministry of Education, if this is an open source technology you're going to offer to support, this is going to go national. And what could that mean for your business model, for your for-profit structures? Could this actually help some of your own products, you know, your own applications, because you have built these things and they are popular, as you mentioned, some of them are in their top three. I really hope so. Right, so well, that's the plan. It, it really, like, <laughs> um, we, we're trying hard, right? So, like, we, we have the enterprise division and uh, people who talk with enterprise and the government to, to offer solution. And um, uh, I, I, I'm looking forward to, like, you know, a bigger and, uh, and you know, even more uh, bigger deal and uh, bigger work with like, enterprise and government in the future. Absolutely. And, you know, there's a lot, obviously, that's happening for you, uh, the way in which you've built out this already. And I'm sure there's more to come. Is there anything that you wanted to add to the discussion we've had today, Tomo, uh, long with regard to Tomo? Um, is there anything you'd like to add in terms of, you know, your roadmap um, or anything that you've been doing to build this out? So I already described the Tomo Z protocol free by token. Uh, and uh, TRC21 standard, which is uh, rolling out, I think in one month, the tennis so should be should be available uh, sometime this month. Mm -hmm. And uh, the main net around one or two months after that. We also working on Tomo X protocol, which is a decentralized exchange protocol. So you can build any uh, decentralized exchange relayer on top of Tomo X mm -hmm. in 30 minutes. And it only cost you maybe one hundred dollar per month to run an exchange. Okay. So that's also something uh, we we really kept like uh, looking forward to see it uh, live in the next few months. Right. Well, there's a lot coming. And for those who are wondering, in terms of comparisons to others, I think this is an important point to sort of discuss because we see other layer one solutions or other blockchain infrastructures. We see uh, layer one, layer two solutions trying to really uh, improve the efficiency of these layer ones. We even see layer zeros coming out now as more the TCIP um, sort of versions, iterations to really spread the, the network of blockchains throughout. So why do you feel or how can you sort of articulate that Tomo has assets that the others don't, you know, how can we know that there's a real chance for you and a real niche market for you um, to thrive and continue to really can, you know, do well in this space? I think UK is more important than just the number, right? So you need people to actually use your product instead of just talking about your product and, you know, and, and, and then, uh, going around and talking about number. It's not useful, especially when, for us, uh, we have a line mainnet. We want to see people using it instead of talking about number. Mm -hmm. just, just, uh, just a point, you know, just a point, you know, a particular point about the number. Uh, we know that Ethereum is doing seven transactions per second right now. Right. And it's still big it, public chain out there. And, uh, you know, Tombow chain is doing like 2,000 transactions per second. It's like, what is it like? It's like 50 times or 100 times better. Mm. So uh, people are talking about 1 million transactions per second, but it's, it's, it's a poorly meaningless number mm. if you don't have UKs, right? So right. let's say we talk with people from the, the, the Central Bank of Vietnam, right? And uh, these are the number I have. They have like around 3 million transactions per day in mm -hmm. own Vietnam. So it comes down to about 30 transactions per second. So why do, we, why do you even need like 1 million transactions per second? I totally agree, and, uh, it's often if, the if question. You, if you look at the, the, the Facebook white paper, they also doing like, I think so, 1,000 transactions per second. Mm -hmm. that, that's what the Libra network is capable of doing. Right. So uh, they don't even need to, to push the number because they have actually you guys and user right so i think you know for for as a project you you better start looking at the you guys and absolutely user instead of number 
And, and fortunately for you as well, Long, you started this process a long time ago and now you're in this phase of really show, showing that you can build more of this ecosystem, build more of the, of the dApps that, um, so that they have real use case. And I think that's really um, a, position, a, a fortunate position for you. You've earned it certainly, but it's given you that first user advantage as well. Um, and now it's up to you to really build upon that user, user base um, to uh, and, uh, continue on beyond the 14 that you have now with regard to the applications and really, um, you know, benefit from perhaps the burgeoning uh, growth we've seen in Asia. Are you excited about that? The fact that blockchain is a very uh, promising and positive discussion among the top echelons of business as well as governments in the region? I definitely hope so. And... Um for example, like the new, uh, you know, the Facebook coming in the game and uh, building their own crypto network is actually validating the crypto business model. Mm. So, uh, so I'm very exciting. I, I'm very excited to see what is what is going to happen in the next one or two years. Absolutely, I think we're all very excited. And Long, thank you so much also for providing more information. This was an update for all the people who wanted to know more about what Tom has been doing. Certainly, Long's been very busy with the team in building this out and will continue to be busy, I'm sure. But once again, all the very best, mate, as you continue to build this ecosystem so, so it can really flourish, it can really showcase, not just in Asia though, it is a very open source system, it is global, and it's really there to be an infrastructural system that changes the game, decentralized, it's got the master nodes, it's got everything built in with its own proof of stake voting system to be democratic and to be there to really change the game when it comes to how business can be done. So thanks Long for this and hopefully we can catch up again soon. Thank you, Brad. Yeah, it was a wonderful conversation with you. Likewise, always is and you're an absolute gentleman when you do speak. So thank you for your time and we'll catch up really soon. Thank you, see you later. <laughs>